This video is going to be an investigation and hit piece on a special feature of Python called Global Interpreter Lock, also known as Jill. In case you've never heard of her, she's been around since the dawn of Python, and she's always lurking in the shadows of your Python interpreter. Her purpose is simple. She's a mutex lock that protects against race conditions, unsafe code, and corrupted memory buffers, making your code thread safe. This video is going to investigate and expose quite a substantially serious and dangerous nuance of Jill that is incredibly difficult to detect, yet all too easy to fall victim to. This is one of the exceedingly rare occasions that a low-level reality of computer science seeps through the safety net of high-level languages, committing adequate precaution from Python developers. I'm not going to assume any prior knowledge, meaning I'm going to comprehensively build up to the issue in order to give you the deep and robust foundation you'll need to fully understand its scope, beginning with threading and multiprocessing within Python, leading to what threading actually is under the hood, and exploring the differences between CPU and I.O. bound processes. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and start with a simple example using plain Jane Python without any fancy trickery. This is just going to be an illustrative example to keep things easy to follow, but it is fully representative of something that could happen in the real world. Let's go ahead and define a simple function that sleeps for one second, just to simulate something getting done. Let's also pretend that there are multiple different things that the function could do, so let's make it parametric with a step parameter and just print it out. Now, let's say that we need to perform steps 1 through 4. It should be pretty intuitive that this should take 4 seconds, as each step takes 1 second. We can go ahead and try this with these four respective function calls, or we could just do this in a loop. Sure enough, it takes four seconds to run, as expected. Now let's go ahead and introduce the concept of multi-threading. Threading is a way that we can break down multiple tasks into multiple threads, with the hope of running them concurrently, meaning in parallel, to save time. We can go ahead and import threading in Python, and create a thread with threading.thread. .thread. We hand to each thread a target function, as well as any applicable arguments. To begin execution on a thread, we use thread.start. In this case, I'm going to have each one of our four functions run on an individual thread. One way of doing this would be to create a list of four threads using a list comprehension, and then start each one of those four threads in a loop. One last thing with threading is that in a lot of cases, you want a checkpoint of sorts, where you can pause execution and wait for all of your other threads to finish. This just means that if some threads are slower than others, you can wait for them to finish before moving on. We can do this with thread.join. With this, each one of our four function calls will run in its own individual thread at the same time. Sure enough, this now only takes a single second to execute, as the runtimes all overlap. This is the basic idea of threading. Let's now go one step deeper by using a slightly more realistic example. Let's define a function that accepts a number and increments a counter variable that number of times. We're going to make counter a global variable just so its state persists across function calls. Let's say we need to increment this counter a total of 4 million times. Using plain Jane Python, we can simply call the function with num set to 4 million and print the results. Of course, the counter reaches 4 million. Let's see what happens if you want to thread this. Let's create 4 threads and have each thread count to 1 million. After execution, let's print the counter, and as you would expect, we now have 4 million again. Let's go ahead and time both of these approaches. Surely the threaded approach needs to be approximately 4 times faster right? But for some reason, they take the same amount of time. What's going on here? If you have any ideas, take a guess in the comments before I proceed. The answer is Jill. It turns out global interpreter lock is sabotaging our best efforts at speeding up our code. While this might seem unexpected, it's actually completely normal and the intended behavior of Jill. But before I explain what Jill actually is, let me take a moment to explain a little bit more about what threading actually is. You probably know that your physical CPU has some number of cores and some number of threads. Unless you have a CPU with hyper-threading, you're going to have one thread per core. At the moment, I have a 4-core and 4-thread CPU. This means that my CPU can only perform 4 operations at once. In fact, it's a mathematical certainty that my CPU will never be capable of performing more than 4 operations at once. If you were following along, you might have tried to raise the thread count to a value higher than the physical number of threads on your CPU. Rather than getting an error, you would have found that your code runs just fine. Well, maybe this is just a Pythonic abstraction. Surely you can't actually run more threads than you physically have, right? Turning back to our first example, let's raise the number of threads to 100. And shockingly, we can fit all 100 function calls into that same single second. So, what's going on? 
It turns out that threads can steal time from each other, though this is completely normal. Just think about how many programs you normally have open at once, not to mention the tens of background processes running on your computer right now. In fact, we can see in Task Manager that I have over 3,500 threads running on my 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU. The idea that you can only run 4 threads on a 4-core CPU is only true under the assumption that each individual thread needs 100% CPU. Otherwise, you can have thousands of threads stealing time, aka taking turns utilizing the CPU. You won't ever get into a situation where threads run without time being stolen from them, unless you dabble into real-time computing, which is a fascinating topic that definitely deserves its own video. Anyway, that was just a parenthetical remark about threading. Let's get back to Jill. As stated on Python's website, in CPython, the global interpreter lock, or Jill, is a mutex that protects access to Python objects, preventing multiple threads from executing Python bytecodes at once. The Jill prevents race cases and ensures thread safety. In case you were wondering, CPython is just the standard implementation of Python. Other Python implementations, such as Jython and Ironthon, don't have a Jill, but that's besides the point. Basically, Jill only allows for a single thread to execute Python bytecode at a time. This is a good point to introduce the concept of CPU bound tasks and I.O. bound tasks. An I.O. bound task is where the time it takes to complete the task is I.O. dominated, such as accessing a file or database, waiting for an API response, or waiting for user input. Our first example with the sleep is an example of an I.O. bound task, as sleeping could be representative of waiting for user input, for instance. This means that a function would be faster if the user responded faster, but not if the CPU is faster. A CPU-bound task, on the other hand, is the opposite. It is a task primarily constrained by our CPU. The second example is CPU-bound, as the CPU is needed the entire way through. In other words, a faster CPU would result in faster execution. Due to Jill, only I.O.-bound tasks will receive a meaningful speed increase with threading, not CPU-bound tasks. This makes sense if you think about it. If the CPU is not in use, meaning you are not actively executing Python bytecode, we can make a thread switch, or a context switch, causing our sleep times to overlap. If the CPU is in use though, the other threads cannot run at the same time, as Jill would be blocking them. This is why our second example is not sped up by threading. The reasoning behind Jill is to protect against unsafe code, such as race conditions. Interestingly enough, if it wasn't for Jill, this counter would actually not be 4 million. Let's go ahead and decompose our increment line to better illustrate this. One thread might read the value of counter into temp, and before it gets to the next line, another thread could read the same value into temp. Now when the first thread increments the counter, all is well, but when the second thread increments the counter, its value will remain the same. This is a prime example of a race condition, and it is the exact reason why Jill exists. If only one thread can be executing Python code at a time, this type of situation cannot arise. So, are we stuck without being able to run our code in true parallel? This might be a good place to mention threading's bigger brother, multiprocessing. It turns out threading is not the only way to run code in parallel. I won't go too deep into multiprocessing, as it definitely deserves its own video, but it might be helpful to peek our heads in. Multiprocessing allows you to create separate processes, each with its own Python interpreter and memory space. This lets you run any Python code in true parallel, as Jill does not enact itself in between different Python interpreters entirely. As we can see here, with multiprocessing, we can actually achieve a 4x speed increase by using all four CPU cores with the CPU bound process. It's not as if this is where our issues stop, as if we chose to use a shared variable across multiprocessing processes, this would not only introduce a lot of overhead, but it would also introduce a race condition, which is exactly what Jill was trying to protect against. We can go ahead and protect against the race condition ourselves with a lock, but this now drastically reduces our speed yet again. Even though Jill prevents against true parallel execution, it really is trying to help us. It really is a doggy dog world. Let's turn back to threading. We are now in a Jill governed world where race cases are protected against. No matter how many times I run this, the result will always be 4 million. W Jill, right? This is the whole point of her after all, right? Well, it turns out Jill got sloppy. Jill only constrains a single thread to run Python bytecode at a time. What this means is that in between bytecodes, a context switch can occur. Well, so far this makes sense, right? We still need to switch threads after all, just not during execution. 
The punchline here is that Jill only protects against race conditions within individual bytecode instructions. The shocking thing is that even this code, with the increment done in a single line, is not safe. This single line with the increment operator actually spans multiple bytecodes under the hood. All we need is for a single context switch to happen in between any two bytecodes to corrupt the results. Well, we're looping a million times per thread, so how come our code still seems to be safe? The only reason why we don't actually see a race case here is because in Python 3, our potential thread switch will be assessed every 5 milliseconds, as determined by sys.getSwitchInterval. Our code is actually running so fast that a thread switch cannot be made in the time it takes to increment the counter, as the increment itself is running in sub-5 milliseconds. This is nothing more than a coincidence specific to this example though, we are certainly not safe. Think about this, if we had code that took longer to execute, or if the switch interval itself was different, such as in Python 2, where a get check interval is used to assess the context switches every 100 bytecodes, the result would end up being corrupted. We can actually demonstrate this by breaking up our increment line again, and inserting a sleep for 0 seconds in between to signal to the operating system that the task may context switch at this exact point. Let's go ahead and run this, keeping in mind that this is fully Jill protected code, and shockingly enough, our result ends up being corrupted, meaning Jill ended up failing us. Situations like this are extremely easy to get into, but could be a nightmare to get out of. Imagine you've been working on code for years, and then a new Python release changes the switch interval, corrupting everything for you. Or imagine you deploy code to different hardware with a different CPU speed, which introduces the bug. There would have been almost no way to detect the issue as is. Understanding the inner mechanics of threading and Jill is a must when writing threaded code. Even in the land of high-level languages like Python, low-level computer science will always be there to get you. Stay safe.